also like to close the event called the Blackstone Hotel. I know people were up there yesterday enjoying food and beverage from the school just in the Tony Highstack from Action Sound for the sound system that you're listening to. Where's Henry Party High up? Can I try a fucking pretty wide enough for the rising fine? And of course, most importantly, the athletes, coaches, officials, volunteers, people who make things happen around this race course. The video crew, the streaming crew, our media team, and a lot of hard work goes into putting these events on. And last week on the Pacific Coast, and this week the Australian Open, and in particular we welcome back athletes from 11 nations as we now turn to the start and the beginning of the women's canoes to one competition. We have 14 boats in this event. Going for the 10 spots in the final coming up at 12.25, 12 12.25 this afternoon, the final for the men's to run, 12.45 for the men's to run. Of course now, in front of us, Emily Hogbin-Boom. So as you struggle to find the field with your feet, and yesterday in the park, and you to come inside on, she's a quick boat up, but she's been learning her skills. Tim Slalom from Kate Eckhart, and wish for a better instructor. From Kate Eckhart, and uh, Emily will be followed by Georgia Rankin, Cody Davidson, Claire Clements, Sarah Crosby, and Georgia O'Callaghan. So the young paddles and women to run to follow, and later on, the women of the field will be Naomi Fox, Jess Fox, Eddie Lutfart, and the USA. And uh, Roger Jalassie is in the field, take your fourth place, get up to the front. Selection, so it's a selection event. Um, so nice to see everybody there paddling, paddling well. The women's squad's looking particularly strong at the moment, which is, so that's nice. And uh, in the men looks solid as well. So yeah, it looks very good for the international year. And then we've got qualification for the Olympic Games this year, of course. So we need to get that right as well. So plenty of paddling. Canoe Sprint, Power Canoe, Freestyle, Canoe Stalin and Cloud Cross are all happening today. And right now in front of us, we talked about the Wings Team and Sprint being strong. So we've got some pretty good competitors out here today. Very good, in fact, an international field with France, USA, Australia and Japan. And we're going to see one of the first finish up. It was uh, Georgia Rankin. 
International with Franchot, Janssen and Marjorie Delassi from France. Joining me now is Kieran Black. Well, a bit of a, a, a rocky start for Franchot Janssen there as France coming in a little bit too high into gate three, so we're having to fight to pull ourselves off that right water feature. She's now managed to get into the upstream gate and back out into the flow, so it's a recovery there from the French paddler. On the bottom half of the course, we're looking at Georgia Callahan just finishing off her run. Young paddler from Melbourne in Victoria. She'll be looking to put herself into one of those qualifying spots for the final later on today. And she does, taking out the top spot. It's a 131.63 for Georgia O'Callaghan. And in second place, Sarah Crosby with a 145.30. And third place, Georgia Rankin with a 161. Next to come, Marjorie Delassou, followed by Haruda Okazaki. Wearing the Bishop Bar, Kate Eckhart, Evie Lucraft, Jessica Fox, and Naomi Fox still to come. Johnson of France coming down towards the finish is not going to challenge the time of Georgia Callahan. Just 1.4 seconds ahead of the Australian side of Franklin Johnson. Holding on the top spot at this stage. Further down towards that main road feature, it's Marjorie Dyer still flying down. She's looking to make up for a little bit of lost time, a couple of two second penalties early in her run that she wanted. Put a little bit more speed on that boat to make up for it. Bearing in mind, 10 of these ladies will qualify for the final later on today, so only four to be eliminated. That means that a lot of these athletes don't need to paddle totally out of themselves, just enough to get another run later on today. So staying between the poles, Avoiding those 50 second penalty is a very important feature of today's semi-final. Starting her run at the top of the course, it's Hiroza Okazaki of Japan, paddler number seven. And yet another one of these paddlers who's come unstuck on the tiny hydraulic creature between gate two and three, but she's managed it well. And she'll look to wrap out nicely. Straight back into the plane. Meanwhile, down the bottom part of the first, Marjorie Delassou in all sorts of trouble. Coming too low into that final upstream, having to fight to get back up to that gate. She's now powering on towards the finish, but she certainly lost some time there. And she'll put herself into position in third place in 134. That should be enough to qualify with only seven votes to go. So this stretch is up for Marjorie Delassou on France. Now watching Hiroko Okazaki of Japan coming down that main road feature. Crucially, kept her body off the poles so far in this run. Clean start to her semi-final assault at the Australian Open of Chris Island. We're watching the women's C1 semi-final still to come. When Mishima, Kate Eckhart, Eddie Lee Farth, Jessica Fox and Naomi Fox all coming at you very shortly here at Penrith Whitewater Stadium. So fast, but you make me 
four top of the course now. It's probably number six. Ren Mishima of Japan starting her run. Getting a little bit out of shape between gate one and two, but recovering nicely. Much better than a lot of her competitors. She has gained a lot of time in that gate two, three sequence. There's four or five of these ladies so far coming in too high into gate three. Getting caught up on the poles. Yeah, to stop the boat. In that section of water where the water flows away from the finish line. So, little bit of time setting up trains is a fast rally down the course. As you'll see, Akazaki of Japan and all sorts down that bottom half of the course. Another part of the plane by the infamous first step feature. And Akazaki stops the clock. It's a 1.37.96. Good stuff from the Japanese paddler. Now looking at the Mishima coming down. Through the 11 there and straight back out into the flow at main wave. Crucially pretty clean so far for Mishima. Quick check on the scoreboard. Fanchon Jensen still holding down the top spot with a 130.14. Georgia Callahan of Australia 131.63. And just behind her, Marjorie Delassu of France with a 134.61. Then Mishima on course. In that second last upstream that we number two feature. As we see, Kay Deckard at the top of the course, another one of our Australian paddlers here today. She'll be looking to book herself a spot in the final later on today. Going for the spin on gate six. Conservative move, but she doesn't need to do anything too extraordinary to book herself a spot into the final. So a conservative start for the Australian paddler Kate Eckhart. Coming down now through gate nine and ten. Really cleanly between the poles. As we're now looking at Mishima of Japan. Coming down into that far last gate and onwards towards the finish. Should be enough to get herself into the semi-final. Just so interestingly, no clean run so far, but uh, with Kate Eckhart, Early Leapfart and uh, Fox and Fox still to come, there's a chance for a clean sheet. But a tricky course, obviously. The tight sequences at the top, five, six, seven into eight. And that 14, 15, double down combination, not easy either. As we wait now to step up the pace uh, with the first of the gun paddlers from Australia, Kate Eckhart, followed by Evie Lutfart, the silver medalist from last week at the Penrith Open, Jess Fox, and the winner of yesterday's, oh sorry, Friday's heat is Naomi Fox, the last to start. Ten spots in the final. Johnson from France leads. At that time, will be pressured by the boat we're looking at there. Coming on the bridge, Evie Lutfart from the United States of America. And just as Evie Lutfart starts a run, Kate Eckhart has laid down the first clean run of the semi-final. It's a 1.78.82, the new fastest time. So well done, Kate Eckhart there. As we're now looking at Evie Lutfart also clean on the top section. And plenty of speed on the boat for the young American. She jumps down across into gate 11. Interestingly, going for the spin on that feature. It's actually quite a difficult move to do as a spin, which means you flow through the gate backwards. The water flows quite aggressively upstream through gate 11, so negotiating that one in reverse is actually a challenging move for a lot of these paddlers, so interesting to see every there opting for that option. A couple of issues, maybe on gate 15. It's come up clean on our scoreboard, so all good there from every little path. That heads towards the finish. All good so far for the United States of America and every little part. And what a great run from Kate Eckhart holding the lead. The first clean run in the semi-final course. Little part getting her strokes together across the pool. The down and into the upstream as a bib number one in the black boat. Jess Fox takes to the course, but we'll follow Luke Fab through the finish. 117.82, the time to beat. And I think she's well inside of that. 112.23, the new lead from Ellie Luke Fab from the USA. As Jess Fox ducks inside gate 7 and into the upstream of gate 8. 
Yeah, it was a very fast run there from the lead path. Quite a conservative start to a run from Jess Fox, but quickly turning up the heat under the bridge, swinging that boat around. Now dropping into that main wave section. It'll be interesting to see which direction she goes for. Another paddle opting for the spin on gate 11, but she's in and out of that eddy super quickly. And back down towards gate 13. It's good stuff from the defending champion, Jess Fox. I like the spin there. And you start on the right side through 12, and then the right side through 13. So no switching at that point. And you know, that 14 and 15 are quite a tight combination. Missy entry for Justin to go 16, but this is the semi-final. The top 10 go through, and then it's all about the race in the final run. The clock starts at zero in the final. You've just got to be in it to win it. As we see now, at the top of the course, it is the fastest paddler from the heats, Naomi Fox. Fourth rank canoe paddler in this field, the fastest in the heats on Friday. So, awesome to see Naomi starting off her run. A really nice entry into gate three, probably the best we've seen of the field so far. As we just follow Jessica Fox down towards the finish. A couple of penalties late on in her run will take her away from that fastest time. And she will be second place with a 114.11. So one vote still to go, it's Naomi Fox. Ducking and weaving under the bridge, nice and tight around those gates for paddle number four, Naomi Fox. She doesn't need to do anything too extraordinary. The cutoff time for the final we're looking at is about a 161. So taking risks is uh, not a really worthwhile investment here on the semi-final run for Naomi Fox. And as you can see, she's already dialed back that intensity somewhat and just making sure she can get her body cleanly in between the poles and book herself a seat in that final later on today. So 110 the year time from just 112 from the loop part, but the four seconds of penalty is the difference. And 13 14, <coughs> tricky for Noemi. And four seconds of penalty is in her score, but the cutoff for the final is laid down. There's plenty of time in hand out of the final. Upstream on the right, and four gates to go before we close out the semi final. The men's semi final to follow. And the women's final will take place at 12.25, followed by the men at 12.45. So 12.25, here comes Naomi through to the finish. And it's a fast run, even with four seconds of power. It's 1.12.23, the time to beat 1.13.27. And Naomi Fox into second place behind the leader in the semi-final. Eddie Lutfarp of the USA, 1.12.23. Naomi Fox in second, Jess Fox third, 114.11, Kate Eckhart in fourth, 117.82, and then it's uh, the paddler from France, Franchon Janssen in fifth, Giorgio Callan in sixth, Marjorie Garassou from France in seventh, and Hanuka Okazaki of Japan in eighth, Sarah Crosby, great to see the junior from Melbourne making the final when Mishima of Japan landing at that field. So the final USA, Australia, France and Japan coming up later in the day at 12.25.
for my Palm Slalom athlete. And together with my colleague Frank Zimmermann, I designed the course for World Cup at Sydney Mark Hebe. Yeah, we have two tricky parts in the course. This is the tricky part in the course. The first is gate 5 to gate 6, where the people have to use this stopper. They have to go from the downstream gate over the stopper to the upstream gate on the right side. I expect that the just the best people will be close to the gate, to the upstream gate. So let's to race for it. the last boat to start will be Lee and Jibu the second of Ireland. The difficult so part is the gate 21, Friday. 22 and 23. And the first 21 is an upstream gate, the then end. they can surf the wave. The first the two downstream gates, they will probably have to spin the, uh, at the first of these downstream gates to get the next the one. Vintage. If it's they try into the direct line, it's very hard to get the first gate to get. Draper will be the first to go for the Bonnie Miles for Richard Mergen competing for the Lebanon. Maybe some parts are better for righties, or some parts are better for lefties, so they will be battling right and left side. But it should be fair in the end. As it is the last race before the Olympics, I expect that the athletes are really on fire to race. I try to challenge them with the course, and so that they get a good feeling, but still don't get any gifts from me. We're saying, well, I'm, I'm calling it at 110 is a good time to make the final uh, But look at the field. We've got, uh, we've said, Liam Chabot, Tristan Carter, Karen Bassett, Lachlan Bassett. They were the fastest, uh, the Bassett brothers and Tristan were the fastest Australians in the heats. But Takuya Haneda, the Rio 2016 medalist, bronze medalist, he's in this field. Dan Watkins, who raced for Australia in Tokyo. He's on a pretty safe swan song, or a celebration, or a victory lap. Uh, so, you know, good to see Dan in his park, in his canoe, enjoying his paddling. Uh, Stephen Lowther, originally from Western Australia, a lot of Westies paddle canoes. Stephen Lowther, George Pankhurst moved here and uh, works for a local engineering company. Uh, from Ireland, Jake Cochran. I'd say he's a contender, a real contender for the final. And the junior world champion, Mark Crosby, will be looking to make his mark in this race today. From New Zealand, Oliver Puchner, capable of the top 10 for sure in the semi final. And a couple of handy uh, Japanese paddles, the Shoto Sazaki and the Shoto Saito. So, uh, Brody Crawford would be quite, I would imagine Brody Crawford uh, would be setting uh, a pretty good score as a marker. Uh, he won the Penny Falcon last weekend. Uh, not a great time in the heats on Friday, judging by his early start. And uh, he'll be looking to make amends with a good run in the semi, go through the final. So, the Australian team selection process is near. Completion. We had races last weekend in the Penrith Open. This weekend, the first round of the heats counted, and the overall score from the final round here today also counted. So, for the top contenders, it's about making it through to the final and then putting down a good run as your score. And we saw that yesterday with Tim Anderson. Uh, he kind of warming up at some last week, a little bit behind Lucian Day 4 who smashed the field and again in the heats on Friday, but yesterday, Tim, what a great run. Two second, two and a half seconds out of the field. Uh, great to see that uh, level of racing here in the Yeah, it was a fantastic run from Tim Anderson yesterday, taking out the win. Also very consistent, less than half a second off his time in the semi-finals, so laying down two fast, clean runs in the semi-finals and finals, no main feat for Tim Anderson, so awesome to see Australian paddlers delivering when it counts here at the Australian Open. But coming up very shortly, Warwick Draper, Miles Ford, Richard Mergen, Hunter Flores and Hamish Dalziel, your first cabs off the rank in this men's C1 semi-final, starting in just over two minutes.
clock is at the zero as we look across to the finish line. And the first boat to go should be Group 21, Mark Draper, an experienced Olympian. Nothing is Beijing and London in the kayak, and here he is in the canoe, already switching sides. One of the early exponents of the switch, and uh, very accomplished in kayak and canoe, and look at those colours in the boat. That's the Olympic colours. And so Roy Draper gets his run underway, wearing good number 21. Yeah, Roy Draper, one of the uh, most stylish paddlers on the circuit in the kayak. We see him here in the canoe. He's always been a big fan of canoe, and I think his long wingspan well suited to the single stick lifestyle. As we see him going for the spin under the bridge, but it's really nicely executed from the three-time Olympian. So Roy Draper really showing his experience on the top part of the course. Super clean so far and crucially keeping that boat moving at a really high speed. So Roy Draper on one at this stage in the semi-finals. Hopefully he can maintain this the whole way through. Obviously he's uh, using a craft piloted by Dan Watkins at the Tokyo Olympics. So that's a boat that certainly knows how to go fast around this course. Be interesting to see whether using such a fresh, stiff boat helps Wes out just getting a little bit more out of the white world here at Hemmings White World Stadium. But a good start to his run. Well, at 14, 15, the tricky combo in the middle of the course, catching, catching out work. Draper, powered by Dan, you can say, using that Tokyo boat, trying to get a wedge like that. It's not just about the equipment, but a good entrance into that upstream on the right side of the course. Can we keep the pace up, going through the finish, a couple of penalties on the board as Miles Ford. It's great to see these boats changing hands, so you would think you've got Dan Watkins on the course, going and finishing up, but it's actually well Draper. Alexander Slavkost, the yeah, legend in men's C1 paddle, but it's uh, Miles Ford in that boat. Draper crosses for the early lead, 124-25. Uh, but yes, let's talk a bit about this, um, the second-hand market here. It's a great, um, a great thing here in Australia. I think uh, definitely a lot of the junior paddlers in Australia find it quite difficult to get brand new craft here, and they're really expensive to ship here. So we actually are somewhat dependent on international paddlers coming to races like this and, and selling off their equipment. So that's why you see a lot of ex-pro paddlers boats kicking around the uh, circuit in Australia because I think that's a real good source of equipment for paddlers around the country here. Absolutely, when you put in kite and canoe, that's a lot of equipment to handle and you can uh, testify to that in your family. Uh, with two paddlers, that's at least four boats you've got to move around. And then you've got spare boats, and now you've got the car cross as well, so a different craft there. And I've put on to uh, having a second-hand boat from Peter Kauser, a legend in men's car, same colours. So sometimes the second-hand boats from a legend uh, are the best built boats, built with extra love and care. Here comes Miles Ford, though, the local from uh, Blacksland. Went to Blacksland High School in the performing arts and the great 800 meter runner and I think I'm correct in saying the 800 meter state champion so he can go the distance it's about the same miles forward through the finish a couple of penalties towards the end as he ties 124.25 to beat but he goes in second 128.23 for miles forward good effort from the local as you're watching now in the top section, paddler number 20, Richard Mergen representing Lebanon. Played for Lebanon at the Rio 2016 Olympic Games. And just coming out here for a weekend of canoe slalom. Obviously Richard focusing on that C1 category. A couple of issues through the 11 12 combination and some early penalties likely to put him out of contention of the semi-final. But that being said, we're yet to see any of these paddlers clock under the 120 second barrier and we expect the cutoff for the semi-final to be somewhere between 108 and 114 seconds. What's your bandwidth? Let's say that's reasonable. Um, I'll go with that. 
Hunter Ferguson leading the red mode at the top of the course from Western Australia. Good long levers as well. In the car, if you are super tall, you've got long legs and weight in the front of the boat. In the canoe, in the kneeling, that length is tucked up and becomes part of your central gravity. So, Robin Bell, I guess we can say, you know, one of Australia's you know, greatest sea long paddles, world champion and Olympic medalist, uh, very tall. And a lot of the international athletes like Matush Benush, uh, Olympic silver medalist, very tall as well. So if you're on the long side, can is a good discipline or a good event to have a crack at. Richard Major trying to get across the line, and he does. But a bit of luggage with him, 258.71, goes into third position. Hunter Florison now turning down, getting back into the flow at gate 12. Well, Royal well, Draper still leads 124.25. Looking now, Hunter Florison coming down through gate 13. A couple of issues for Hunter under the bridge. Like gate 6, 7 combination. Looks like he's recovered really well. And tracking nicely through the back half of his run. So good stuff from Hunter Ferrison. Reverse in Australia there. As we see now at the top of course, it's Hamish Dazir, Tasmanian paddler. who was a strong contender in the K1 yesterday. I think he was the third in the under 23 kayak. Now we see him backing up in the C1. C1 certainly not his preferred category, but awesome to see him giving it a go and getting more runs down the course here at Penrith Whitewater Stadium. And looking really composed so far in his run. So good stuff from the young Tasmanian. Going for the T-grip punt under the bridge there. Some stylish stuff and not afraid to switch it up on the top half of the course, Hamish does here. Hunter Ferguson coming through the finish. Lost a little bit of time on that run, but kept a clean sheet just the last go to go for the Western Australian. And trying to keep that boat on track. It's not easy at the end of a run to keep it tracking and to be able to put the power into each paddle stroke. So if Florison goes third, Draper still lead, leads, waiting for the school board to come alive. And next to go, Ian Amaki, then uh, Trim Long, Ben Ross, Declan Ellis, and uh, the leading junior, Dominic Curtin, who was at the World Championships of Australia last year, Junior World Championships in Italy. Ian Mackey, paddler number 24, on course. A couple of early issues for Ewan, but really nicely recovered. And plenty of speed on the boat down on this straight section towards gate four. Ewan focuses primarily on the C1 category. But we also raced the kayak yesterday, which is awesome to see a lot of these guys backing up. Ewan, of course, in the under 23 age group these days. And really nicely negotiated under the bridge. Ewan lives and works in Penrith. A raft guide at the Penrith Whitewater Stadium, taught by the one and only Cohen Grady. Taught him everything he knows. As we see Ewan coming down through gate 11, it's good stuff. And Hamish says he's just crossed the line, it's a 134.23 for the Tasmanian. He's setting himself into third space, so stylish stuff from Hamish there as we watch Ewan Mackey coming down into gate 13. Looks like one of the tidier runs we've seen so far in the semi-final. We expect the scoreboard to light up pretty shortly. Trent Long, Ben Ross, Declan Ellis, Dominic Curtin, Brody Crawford still to come in the next few minutes. But right now on course, it is Ewan Mackey. Nicely wrapping out of gate 16. And they want to try and jump the boat nicely across the jacks feature. A couple of issues on the pose there, but he'll look to get that boat nicely into the eddy to the right-hand side of number two. At the top of the course now, it's paddler number 12, Trent Long from the USA. Competed at the Australian Open for many, many years, so a very experienced man on this course. One of the strongest guys in the field. 
We're going to look to use his power on the back part of the course, but issues for Trent Long under the bridge. He's going to have to work to make up for some of that time. That's nicely recovered. Trent really showing his experience there as well. You and Mackie powering down towards the finish. A couple of penalties in the back half of the course. Going to prove costly for the Penrith Paddler. It's a 143.44. So fourth spot for you and Mackie. Unfortunately, doesn't look like that'll be quite enough to get him through to the semi-final. The top spot currently held down by Rope Draper, the Victorian and three-time Olympian in the kayak category. Also leading the semi-finals in C1. There's Trent Long on course now, paddle number 13, sorry, gate number 13. And it looks like the wind's gone out of his sails a little bit after having a small recirc under the bridge. And Trent Long looking to finish off his odds open campaign in style. Four twenty-five has got to tumble. I mean, it could be this man, Ben Ross, now group number nineteen. That does set the pace for the rest of the field. A good fast start from the Victorian, charging into five and six goes for the spin. I like the spin, although it could have been tidier from Ross because it keeps you on the flow, you're on the left side, and it's, it's a bit like the 11, 12, 13. Of course, relatively symmetrical in that regard. You put a move in one way, and you set another move the other way to uh, really balance it out. Trend long has just crossed the line. It's a 133.09, setting into third spot. Interesting, the spin moves when you float down through the gates backwards. In the eddy at gate 6, the water is not really flowing upstream too aggressively, so the disadvantage is pretty minimal from spinning, and it also means that it makes that 5, 6, 7 combination a little bit more open for these paddlers, take some of the risk of the 50 second penalty out of the equation. It's really good to see a lot of these paddlers knowing their limits and are making good decisions in their race in order to keep their heads squarely in between the poles. Now here comes Ben Ross into the final section of his run, pushing across into the final upstream on the left-hand side. He's got a good support crew on the inside, cheering him on, carrying four seconds of penalties, 124.25 the time to beat. He's going to smash it, and the new leader from the Melbourne Canoe Club, 109.0, it's Benjamin Ross. Great to see a good score. Something to chase for the rest of the field, and well done, Ben Ross. Yeah, fantastic run there from the young Victorian. We're interesting to see what his compatriot Declan Ellis can do. Declan, of course, from the from Penrith in New South Wales. Spends a lot of time racing and training on this course now, so a lot of experience in this C1 category. That time with Ben Ross, a 105 rule. Without those penalties, we'd be almost certain to make it into the final later on today. Four seconds, could prove costly, he'll be right on the bubble of the paddlers looking to make it into the final. We'll see what Declan Ellis can do. It looks good so far from the Penrith Paddler. Coming down now through that little stagger, 14, 15. Maybe a couple of issues on the pose there, but seems to be going well into gate 16. I like it, they're picking up the pace. Uh, yes, well, we're cool, we're around the uh, sub 110. The real bandwidth was 108 to 114, if I remember. So Ben Ross responding well to that. And the race starting to hot up with uh, Dominic Curtin. With 22, Dominic Curtin, the junior from the World Championships last year. And uh, his last year as a junior. Declan Ellis coming through the finish. A good run. A clean run. Ellis chasing hard. 108.96, our new leader, Declan Ellis. Well done. Slaps the water. I'm not sure if that was a support strike or a slap of joy, but he definitely deserves the joy. A clean run, hard forward run. Well done, Declan Ellis. Yeah, very nice run from Declan Ellis there, and it really starting to tighten up at the top end of the field. 0.04 seconds separating Declan Ellis and Benjamin Ross there, so the standard really lifting in the semi-final now, and I'm sure Dominic Curtin will continue that trend, look really fast and really composed in the top part of the course. 
I saw Dominic before his run this morning, he seemed pretty chilled out and pretty relaxed and I think quietly confident in his ability to lay down a good run here. And so far, so good for the New South Wales paddler. Obviously one of the higher ranked gentlemen in the under 18 category and looking really good in this back half of the course. Could be another contender for the new fastest time. Two clean runs so far. That's from Hunter Ferrison and uh, Declan Ellis. Don Curtin going well. And next to those, Brody Crawford. When bit number six will follow Don Curtin through the finish. Paddling on the left side through the drop. And a good cross into the final upstream from Don Curtin. It's not going to take the lead, but it's good, and they'll be sweating it out for the final. Don Curtin charging to the line. And 1.0896 the lead. Don Curtin is going to go into third position with 1.15.28. Pass your eyes to the top of the course now. It's the powerful paddle from Penrith, Brody Crawford. Brody grew up in WA but moved to Penrith a few years ago to focus on his canoe slalom and it looks to be paying off a really nice top section from Brody. Brody, one of the most powerful paddlers here, big strong fella with heaps of speed on the boat and is really using that to his advantage. Hang on tight onto the water and in and out of the eddy at gate 11 super fast. He's going to start taking a few risks on this midsection, but he needs a fast run. We've got a lot of strong depth of field in the Australian contingent in the men's C1, so Brody really needs to put it down, but it looks good so far from the Penrith Pablo, Brody Crawford. The winner of the Penrith Open last weekend, and certainly demonstrating great form in that race, looking to find a spot in today's final. The top 10 go through. If you're tuning in on Planet Canoe or you're wandering into this venue at Planet Wildwater Stadium, you are watching the Men's Canoe semi-finals. The top 10 go through to this afternoon's final. We've had the women's C1 earlier with uh, Joss Fox, Naomi Fox, Kate H Eckhart going through. And here we go through the finish. Barry Crawford, a good run. 108, 109, 110, 110, 24, and third place for Brody Crawford. He will have to sweat as there are quite a few boats still to come in this men's C1 semi final. Those penalties could be costly for the big man. But Declan Ellis hanging on with 108, 96 at the top, and Ross in second, 109, and then of course PJ Yamamoto from Japan. Well, it'll be interesting to see the uh, penalties, I think, get approved costly in this semi-final birdie with the fastest raw time so far today in the canoe category, but penalties putting him out of the top spot. So we're watching Yakaigo Yamamoto of Japan, paddler number 23, flying down the top part of the course. It's clean so far from the young Japanese paddler, and he'll look to keep this going the whole way through the course. Plenty of speed and plenty of support for Yamamoto wandering along the bank too, so a strong Japanese contingent here this weekend, and it's awesome to see these paddlers getting the support they deserve. Yamamoto of Japan now flying through towards the back half of the course. He's in the second last upstream now, wrapping up nice and tight. Straight back out of the current. The clock's looking pretty good for Yamamoto too. Jumping across into that final upstream on first step feature. We'll try and get a nice tight exit and out into those final two downstream gates. It's going to be just outside that time set by Declan Ellis, but it's still a quick run from Kaigo Yamamoto. Across the line, and it is good enough for fourth spot. It's a 112.51 as we see at the top of the course. Paddler number 17, Will Smith of Great Britain. Awesome to see Will here having a good crack in the semi finals of the men's canoe. Couple of issues under the bridge for Paddler number 17, Will Smith. Potentially more penalties on the gate 567 stagger. It's claimed a lot of scabs already this weekend. And today is no different in the semi finals of the men's canoe. Will Smith on his run now, zipping out. Getting a little bit out of shape to gate 12, so we'll look to really re-accelerate the boat in the mid part of the course and see if we can clear back some of that time that he might have lost under the bridge and at gate 12. But Will Smith on course and looking fast through the midsection. Well, great to have the internationals back here at the Penrith Whitewater Stadium, the last big year for international racing here was 2020. We had 25 countries. Uh, this year we're up to 12. Uh, we'll add Will Smith.
We had him here racing last week. Uh, good to see him fresh off the plane and working on his turn line. Will Smith across the pool at the end of his run with four gates to go and at the top. Daniel Shamir, nice in to go through, but not so nicely out taking the pole with him. Well, Daniel Shamir at the top of his run, affectionately known as Dalvin by a lot of his friends, and as you can see, one of the more popular paddlers we've got here at Penrith Whitewater Stadium, one of the true gentlemen of the Salem community, as we see Dalvin flying down through the course. A couple of issues on the first upstream, but it looks to have recovered really nicely and a stylish start to his semi-final. Of course, we saw Daniel's brother, Charlie Shamio, competing in the canoe, sorry, in the kayak yesterday, doing really well in that junior age category and awesome to see Daniel now in that under 23 C1 age group and flying down in the middle part of the course. So Shamio of Melbourne really putting on the afterburners. He knows he needs to deliver a run here in the semi-final and it looks like he's going to do that, so good stuff from Daniel Chamier. Melbourne Paddler now spends a lot of his time in Penrith, having moved up here to focus on Canoe Asylum. And you can see that his speed on the boat is fantastic as he comes out into that. Jack's move, switching to the crossbow, an iconic Daniel Chamier move. As you see him now on the right side of the boat for the upstream. So really touch that exit from boat three for Chamier. He's making good through the middle and coming into the final side. Switches to his left hand for the cross to get him high on the upstream. And two downstream boats to go. He's looking for a sub 110. It's going to be tight. 108 96 leads. That's Declan Ellis. It's not a bad effort from the Victorian. He crosses in 115 64 and into sixth position. So Ellis leads from Ben Ross. Brody Crawford in third, Yamamoto Japan in fourth, Curtin in fifth, and Shamio in sixth. And of course now, Archie Nelson. Archie Nelson will flow down through the first three gates, but issues early on under the bridge for Archie Nelson. Penalties on gate six and potentially seven as well. And then getting stuck on the bollards below that first upstream on the left-hand side. So Archie Nelson, not the start to the run that he would have liked, but one of the more promising junior paddlers in C1. He's seen a lot of improvement in the last year for this young fella, which is from Melbourne in Victoria. And um, we're up here for the Penn Open and Oz Open. Looking really nice in this mid part of the course, so a good recovery for Archie Nelson here. And he'll look to wrap out really nicely. And again, another paddler jumping on to the right-hand side of the boat for the upstream of gate 19. So, on course, it is Archie Nelson. And at the top of the course, following Archie Nelson down, we've got Shota Sato of Japan, paddler number 11, starting off his run. Another one of a very strong contingent of Japanese paddlers here this weekend at the Australian Open. A large support crew running down on the bank from Sato here, and a really good start for the Japanese paddler ducking and weaving through the poles. Not afraid to throw the boat around, but it seems to have worked out for him cleanly through that tight stagger. Archie Nelson finishing, not very happy with himself. He's limps across the line and the reason being the 50 second penalty on gate 21. He's uh, united to his score, so Ellis still leads Ross in second, Crawford in third. Something to think about as well as trying to finish off that run and making sure in the final few boats where the arms are burning, your lungs are too, and you still want to keep your focus, drive the boat through those waves. So, difficult finish for Archie Nelson, but uh, on course now, Shota Saito. And yesterday, the Japanese were very well. They were on the podium in a few events, but they were so excited about paddling here that we had to pull them off the course to get them up to accept their awards. And just a reminder to the Japanese team, if you go well today, show up. They're giving out under 18, under 23, and open boomerangs for the place getters. And they don't have to come back. You can take them home. At the top of the course now, paddler number 13, Oliver Pickner of New Zealand. One of the most promising canoe paddlers from the land of the Long White Cloud at the moment as we see him coming down through gate four. It's a very solid start for Oliver Pickner. A 
Saito of Japan hook up the beam with a 114-64 that is still yet to show up on our scoreboard. I think potentially we're waiting on some penalties. But it's Oliver Thukner on course, flying down this top part of the course here at Penrith Whitewater Stadium. Just a quick score check. Declan Ellis currently holding down the top spot. A clean run, 108.96. So good stuff from Ellis. Ben Ross holding down second spot with a 109 flat. And Brady Crawford currently third with a 110.24. Shota Saito's time has showed up. It's a 116.64. Good enough for seventh spot provisionally. It's Oliver Fickner now on course. He's really flying through that mid section. Trying to keep it clean around the poles. Gauge 15, 16. Delicious upstream on gate 16 there for Oliver Fickner. Jumping across the stop at Jacks. Switching back onto the right hand side of the boat for the but upstream. And he'll look to keep this momentum going. The time to beat a 108.96. It's going to be full close for Oliver Kuchner. I think the penalties early on might prove costly. But this should be a contender for some of the faster times so far as putting it out towards the finish. 108, the time to beat. It's going to be just outside that. And Oliver Kuchner, it'll be good enough for fourth spot, I believe. As you see now, Mark Crosby, probably number 14, the junior world champion in the canoe single category, ducking and weaving his way through the stagger under the bridge. He'll be unhappy with that penalty on gate seven, swinging that boat around a little bit too aggressively. But Mark got plenty of raw speed in the boat here in the C1. Paddles the kayak as well. We saw him racing in the kayak yesterday, unfortunately snapping his paddle in the semi-final. So hopefully his equipment holds together this morning in the C1 semi-final, but he's going to need to put a little bit more speed on in the back half of the course, playing two penalties already. The time to beat still Declan Ellis at 108.96, so it's Crosby versus Ellis at this stage. Hopefully he can keep it clean further down the course, but another penalty, some excess baggage for the reigning junior world champion in the C1 category. So watch Mark is really going to have to light the afterburners across the pool beneath number two into that final move. Charging hard on the course for the young Victorian. Got a good jump. Jack's jump, let's call it. Final a few gates for Crosby. Got a good contingent supporting him through. He's on 100 now. He's got 10 seconds to get across that line. Powering through the finish. It's a good finish for Mark Crosby. 110, 111, 14.01. Goes into sixth position. Carrying six seconds of penalties. 113.01 for Mark Crosby. And we are now down into almost into the top 10 when Jake Cochran finishes. We'll start qualifying votes for the final and it looks like uh, Declan Ellis is well placed. Tom Ross, Brady Crawford and Oliver Putchman will be sweating it out a little bit because still fast boats to come. It definitely looks like we've got a contender for the new fastest time. On course right now, Jake Cochran of Ireland flew down the top section, some of the best transmission of any paddles we've seen this morning at the Australian Open. And it looks like he's keeping that momentum rolling down into the back half of the course. So Joe Cochran of Ireland on course, only one penalty to his name thus far. So hopefully he can keep it clean. Further down the course, just four gates to go for the Irishman. He'll look to jump nicely across the soccer at first step. And we'll wait to see how he goes on that final upstream. The stopwatch is looking pretty favourable for the Irishman. Just one gate to go. He'll be well inside that time set by Declan Ellis and you'll be looking at your new race leader. Jake Kirkland drops into the top spot with a 105.82. Just awaiting on confirmation of penalties there, but it looks like a quick run from the Irishman. As you see now, Pablo number 16, George Panko, starting off his run. Originally from WA and now living in Penrith. Let's go, George. Good exit out of the upstream. Six ups on the course. Well, over the red and white poles. And this time to be gained or loss on the entry through the great line. And also on the exit, getting the boat back up to speed. 
critical. Let's see how George Pinkhurst goes in the right hand upstream. We go for the wind very high and out, working across to the tight sequence 14, 15. And a squeeze across cleanly through there. Good paddling from George Pinkhurst. Moved from Western Australia to train here in Penrith Works at Coffee Engineering. Coffee Engineering. We'll give them a plug. They'll be working on some of the upgrades here to the venue on behalf of the New South Wales government. Here comes George Pankhurst out of the last upstream on the right across the pool. 105.82, the new time to boot. That was uh, Jake Cochran. He snuck through under the radar. And uh, Declan Ellis in the second, 108.96. So Cochrane, provisionally the first qualifier for the final. And here comes George Pankhurst. Will he make it into the top 10? We'll have to wait and see. 114.25 goes eighth. As we've seen out the top of the course, steaming down that top section. It's Stephen Lowther, formerly of Western Australia, now lives and trains in Penrith. Really fast on the top three gates. We saw Steve really turning his boat quite a lot in that stagger under the bridge, but crucially kept it clean. Might not have been the speediest of lines, but a conservative start for Stephen Lowther, who now looked to turn on the speed in the back half of the course. An important run for these Australian guys going for selection into the national team. So Steve will really want to lay one down here, and it looks good for the paddler for the Western Australia. It's paddler number eight on course, Stephen Lowther. He's looking really good through this back half of the course. We try and keep the boat running in between those poles and wrapping out nice and tight. Driving that boat towards the Jacks feature. He'll jump across onto the stopper. And the time's looking really good so far for Steve Lowther. Although it looks like the wheels are falling off a little bit. Steve really chasing hard, but unfortunately not in the right spot for the downstream gate. 18, looks like there's the, some issues for Steve there, so not what he would have wanted, but at the top of the course is Daniel Watkins, paddler number two, represented Australia at the Olympic Games in Tokyo in 2021, and now on a bit of a retirement lap here, just here to soak it all in, enjoy the racing here at Penrith Whitewater Stadium, and seal off his fantastic career in the canoe the right way, but good stuff from Daniel Watkins on the top of the course. So is it, an, is it an advantage that your boat's already been down the course with the uh, white draper laying it out? I'd say absolutely not. It's probably full of white draper sweat and a little bit of extra water. So Daniel Watkins won't be too concerned about that, though. He's just here to enjoy his racing. As Stephen Lowther has crossed the line, it's a 120.50. He'll be outside of the contention for the final, unfortunately, for Stephen Lowther there. But Daniel Watkins flying down the course, not really applying much power to the blade, but nailing all of the lines here in the canoe men's semi-final. Dan, one of the most stylish paddlers on the World Cup circuit in his heyday now having recently retired and just here to enjoy the racing and he's flying down the course. It looks like one of the fastest runs so far and crucially clean as well for the Tasmanians. So Dan looking really good here. Only four gates to go. Be interesting to see if he does any stylish moves on his final drop or just keeps it on the straight and narrow. Takes a pause across the pool and nails it coming in nice and high into that final upstream. Good work from Dan Watkins. He's sustained a steady pace the whole way. He's killing it. He's going to take the lead. No errors, nothing on the scoreboard to take away from a great run. 102 63. Daniel Watkins, who has still got it. Tokyo Olympian, the Olympic finalist uh, from the Tokyo 2020 Olympic Games. Daniel Watkins showed that took him to the Olympic Games. Composure, I like the way he measured his run all the way through. He used the water exceptionally well. He wasn't pumping it out, but his positioning was exceptional. And his upstreams were smooth, almost effortless. And uh, he set the score, 102.63. Uh, through to the final, Jake Cochran of Ireland came in second, 105.82. And through also provisionally Declan Ellis and Benjamin Ross for Australia. So three out of the four provisional qualifiers are from Australia. Brody Crawford sweating it out in fifth, then Oliver Puchna in sixth, and Yamamoto of Japan in seventh. Still six boats to go. Shoto Suzaki on course, then Takuya Haneda of Japan, Rocky Bassett, Kevin Bassett, Tristan Carter, and Liam Jabu of Ireland to round out the field. 
competition we're starting to heat up here in the semi-finals of the men's canoe. Shota Sasaki on course. He's going to be right on the battle for qualification in this C1 semi-finals. So he'll need to pull hard across the pool. But at the top of the course, it's Rio 2016 Olympic bronze medalist Ku Hameda flying into that top move, really showing his class at the top half of the course. It's Taku Haneda. Watch this time, it will set the score there to light. If he can keep it on the rails the whole way down, Sasaki of Japan crosses the line. It's not going to be enough. It's a 116. He'll be outside the time needed to get into the final later on today. And a couple of issues for Haneda on course as well. But Haneda, a classy paddler. And one of the fastest men in the world on his heyday. Of course, a medalist at the Rio 2016 Olympics. So the man knows how to lay down a fast run. As you see him now playing down towards gate 13. He's got a little bit of excess baggage added to his time. At least one penalty already. And I'm seeing another pole swinging further down the course. So Hanada will really have to light the afterburners in the back half of the course if he's going to make it into this final. Very popular man on the circuit, always got a smile and time for chats and very popular in Japan too. Quite the pin-up world after winning the bronze medal in the 2016 Rio Olympic Games in the blue boat crossing the pool. So still on our school board, just one penalty showing up, but he needs to hurry up to bubble around the 110 mark. Just going to make it, I think, if we can get onto his right side and drive the boat through to the line. 108, 109 is crossing in 110.76. And the Takuya Haneda goes into seventh position. And we'll have to sit and wait and see what others do to know whether he's made the final. Looking good for Brody Crawford, though. He's in fifth. And he'll still cross the line. There is Lachlan Bassett, Kaylin Bassett, Tristan Carter, and Liam Giroux. Yeah, so we're really at the quality end of the field here in this men's C1 semi-final. Lockie Bassett, a really nice start to his run. Some conservative lines, but crucially keeping it clean. I think Lockie should be confident in his ability to make the final, so he's not going to paddle too far outside himself. That being said, the times are tumbling. A 102, the standard, so far. So the times are very fast here in the men's C1 semi-final. Lockie Bassett coming down into the upstream of gate 16. Providing his older brother Kalen Bassett for selection into the national team. An important race, this one here at the Australian Open for these guys. But Lucky Bassett looks like he's on a pretty good run, although a red flag showing on our time screen. So it'll be interesting to see what's going on there. But not looking so good now for Bassett of Victoria, fighting to get into that final upstream. As we see his older brother Kalen Bassett starting off his run. Tidy start for the Victorian paddler, really high into the upstream of gate three and wrapping out nice and tight. So we're crossing in a total time of 157.76. A potential disappointing there for Lachlan Bassett as Bassett number two, or number one. Group seven in the red and black and white boat. Kaylin Bassett comes out of gate eight. Looking precise through the downstream gates there, 9 and 10. Early touch of gate 4 as Bassett sets up for the spin and onto the wave, flicks the boat downstream. Needs to hurry up for 102, 63 the lead. He's looking for a 110, 76 or a one, um, sub 112 probably will, will get Bassett through to the final and takes it. Carefully through 14 and 15, trying to keep the middle section clean, but we need to push hard through those final two upstreams. It's looking good for Karen Bassett here, pretty composed run really, no massive risks so far. All he's got to do is keep it in between the poles on these final couple of moves. Looks like he's got plenty of time in hand to qualify for the final, so he won't need to do anything too far outside himself. And a nice jump across into that final upstream. So Kalen Bassett on his way to the finish. Meanwhile, at the top of the course is Tristan Carter. Another Australian paddler living in Penrith, having to chase a little bit. And Bassett into third position, 106.70. That secures Kalen Bassett. 
are both in the final, which will be coming up later than today. Around 12.35. Here comes uh, Tristan Carter into the upstream of Gold Ape, working hard, clean so far. So Bassett is through, Declan Ellis is through, Ben Ross is through, Brody Crawford is through. Who's next? And it could be a Tristan Carter, the next Australian into the final, if he can hold this good-looking run together. Yeah, Tristan Carter, one of the most powerful of the Australian paddles, is a very strong fella. Gets that boat up to speed really, really quickly. Officially cleaned so far on his run, so no excess baggage added to his time yet. And Tristan looking really nice in the C1 this morning. Of course, we saw Tristan paddling in the kayak yesterday, a semi-finalist, and I think he might have been a finalist as well. So Tristan, plenty of pace in the kayak, but C1 is his preferred category. That's what he's here to race this weekend, and it is his primary concern as we see Tristan Carter on the penultimate upstream. He's got plenty of time in hand. He should be confident that this should qualify him for the final and the big dance later on today. Jumping across into that final upstream, it's very nice. This could challenge for that top time, currently held by Daniel Watkins. It's Carter versus Watkins. Watkins, Carter, who's it going to be? I think he'll be just outside that time with Daniel Watkins by the time he crosses the line. And into second position, no third position, equal. Equal second, so call it how you will. 105 82, Tristan Carter ties with Jake Cochran. 1582, but a clean run for the Australian and through to the final. Just one boat to go, and it's Liam Jibu of Ireland. He's on course, and it's between Liam Jibu and Kojo, Kojo Yamamoto. So the target time for the Irishman is 112.51. And uh, watch the score. It's very close around that move at gate 12. We'll leave that to the judges. What we're lacking is that beautiful run from Dan Watkins leading the field, 102.63. We're also lacking a tight pack. The Australians have made it through. Not looking good for Ireland and Liam Jibu, unfortunately. Red flags in 12 and 14. It's 50 seconds of penalties added to his score. And 12 and 13, too tight. Got to get your head and part of your boat in the boat. And the Irish will not do that. So, Watkins, 102.63, out in front. And it looks like from Australia, we've got Crawford, Ross, Ellis, Bassett, Carter, and uh, Watkins through for a showdown in the final. Actually, there goes Shibu across the line. He will not be happy. 105, the real time, but 100 seconds of penalties puts him out. So, provisionally, those qualifiers for the final coming up come from Australia, Ireland, and Japan. The winner of the semi final, final Dan Watkins, 102.63, a great run there, clean run from the Tokyo Olympic finalist. In second, Jake Cochran, three seconds down, 105.82, and it's Carter in equal second with a clean run, 105.82. Uh, Bassett from Australia in fourth, uh, Ellis, Declan Ellis in fifth, then Ross from Australia in sixth. The Brody Crawford, who do you believe to make it through? Uh, the winner of last week's Penrith Open gets to really establish himself as a member of the team for 2023. Oliver Pichna from New Zealand. And great to see Takuya Haneda from Japan making it through. The Rio Olympic medalist and his teammate, Kogo Yamamoto. So two boats from Japan, one from New Zealand, one from Ireland. And the rest are Aussies, and the time that it took was 1.12.51, so we thought, uh, well, 1.08 and 10 and 14, so good racing from the Canoes, and well done, Dan Watkins, back it up in the final, we'd love to see that uh, swan song from the Tasmania. Don't go anywhere, we'll be up next with the Canoe Freestyle Championships. Competitors Richard Merge and Thomas Elms, Ewan Matthew, Joseph Hogan Richard Pass, Peter Newland, Tim Mann, Jack Newland, Finn McLeod, Archie Gill, Alex Cook, Gabriel Rodriguez, Holly, Lou Marcus, Emily Hogan Bourne, and Carl Matthews, Joseph Alan Cork, all taken to the water. He was a kicking face up on the very short. Ba-da-ba! 
will join us up at the top of the course for the freestyle warm up and for the 2022 PA Freestyle Championships. That siren does not mean evacuate, it says stay here, we're pumping it up in 5.7 course. There's the spray at the top. 5.2.8 tons of water for each month. Full flow for the freestyle at the top of the course. Come and watch the best freestyle athletes in Australia doing their thing. 12.35 to 12.10 for championships. We are at 12.25 for the Wing C1 final. That's for Australians to take on America and France. See you on time at 12.45. Hello guys, that's some toast. So if you join us, stick around for a plenty of travel action.
really nice to have more athletes coming back out. Obviously with COVID we were pretty lonely out here and you realise how far Australia is <laughs> from the rest of the world. Um, but yeah, there's a good, good turnout. Hopefully uh, next year we'll, we'll see even more. We've got a bit of uh, outrigging uh, V1 this afternoon, so that's the selection. So it'll be interesting, you know, about pre-calling and hydrating and eating and uh, having a bit of rest because we've got a four hour gap in the middle of the day. So hopefully we can suck some air con and uh, yeah, try and ease into the racing um, given the, the extreme conditions. Uh, yeah, yeah, so far everything's going to plan. You know, the K4, it was cracker, K2 it was cracker. And then just coming here to finish off the K1000. So far I can't, I can't complain and you know, I'm happy with that. And just now a little bit of rest just to prepare ourselves for, you know, the following international season.
fitness routine and it's something that I can adapt to all different venues and it helps me get into the zone before racing. I guess the first step is getting to the venue and seeing what the course is for the, for the race. Usually we have the demo runs and we watch those demo runners go down and we figure out which lines we're going to take. Each course is quite different and some venues have certain areas which are a lot harder than others. For example, in Tartsen, it's that famous first drop. So I find that in the week leading up to the race and in those training sessions, I pick out a few areas I want to work on and focus on that. Once the course is set, I analyze it with my coach. I might walk through it by myself and figure out where I want to place my boat and, and where the key moves are, where the biggest difficulties will be. And if I need a little bit more analysis, I'll watch some video as well. On race morning, after I've had a good night's sleep and a good breakfast, I get to the course about two hours before. I watch the four runners and I get on for a good warm up to get the body moving, get the mind going and uh, get excited for the race day.
Uh, my name's Mike Drews. I've been involved in coaching canoe slalom for over 30 years now, and um, part of that role is designing courses, both in training for national competitions and also internationally for the ICF. The main thing you're looking for as a starting point is fairness, but also really to challenge the skills of the athlete. We always try and have um, what I call it an accessible course, so the fastest athletes can do it in a really difficult way, um, but the other athletes still can access that move by doing it as a spin or going around or this alternative, so everybody can do the move, but only the very best athletes can, can get it in the most direct possible way. So within the rules, you have to have between either six or eight upstreams. So the idea is it's an even number, so you can have a balance of left and, and right-handed upstreams and either six or eight. There's a guideline in the, in the rules around uh, balance and fairness, so it, it should be balanced for left and right-handed paddlers. But there's certainly a trend in, in paddling now that a lot of the C1 paddlers are very proficient at switching, so they actually will now take the advantage and say, okay, well, this is a left dominant move. I'll paddle on my left here, and this is faster on the right. I'll paddle on my right here. We also have to take into account the, the judges when we're designing a course. Um, there's a lot of the fine positioning of the gates, which is considering the judges. So trying to put the gates in the trough of a wave rather than on the peak of the wave, so the pole heights can be more favourable because if the poles have to be very high because the water is splashing around then it's very hard for the judges to sort of pick where the heads are around the gate so we can really help help in that in that process. There's two designers so it's always uh, a discussion and, and uh, really playing ideas off each other and I think that enhances the quality of the course. My personal approach is discuss the the, the values that you want to have around the course and, and a lot of the time for, for me that's about really utilizing a lot of what the white water suggests already so there's always some some great moves that uh, are suggested by each course each venue and that would be different every time we really have to look at the rapid and decide what the most stable features are because the the, the rapids will surge and pulse and a lot of the features will change shape a little bit and, and, and morph in, in and out as the river flows. And so we're really looking for the, the most stable features that we, we would use. But again, that's part of slalom is that adaptability and the best athletes will be able to adapt when the water changes a little bit, they'll be able to see what's possible with the change and they'll still use it and do all of that in a moment and change their, their plan. And, and then you're trying to be creative and look at them and say, how could we use that? What kind of interesting challenges could we set on that shape of a wave or that shape of a stopper? It's quite a creative exercise and that's why I really enjoy doing it. Yeah.
really nice to have more athletes coming back out. Obviously, with COVID, we were pretty lonely out here, and you realise how far Australia is <laughs> from the rest of the world. Um, but yeah, there's a good good turnout. Hopefully, uh, next year we'll, we'll see even more. We've got a bit of uh, outrigging uh, V1 this afternoon, so that's the selection. So it'll be interesting, you know, about pre-calling and hydrating and eating and uh, having a bit of rest because we've got a four hour gap in the middle of the day. So hopefully we can suck some air con and uh, yeah, try and ease into the racing um, given the, the extreme conditions. Uh, yeah, yeah, so far everything's going to plan. You know, the K4, it was cracker, K2 it was cracker. And then just coming here to finish off the K1000. So far I can't, I can't complain and, you know, I'm happy with that. And just now a little bit of rest just to prepare ourselves for, you know, the following international season.
Welcome to the Penrith Whitewater Stadium, where behind me athletes are practicing ahead of the Australian Open canoe slalom competition this weekend. It's great to have the international athletes back after the long absence through COVID. And not only is it an international event, it's also an Australian team selection event for the junior, under 23 and senior teams. And this is a very important year, the pre-Olympic year and the qualifying year. And uh, the senior team will be competing in London on the 2012 Olympic course in September. So join us this weekend at the Australian Open and watch the excitement here live at the Penrith Whitewater Stadium.
points up to the Sea Run Women's Finals, Georgia Rankin, formerly of Western Australia, now lives and trains in Penrith. Flying start in her C1 final. I think she was maybe on the back half of the course in that gate. 14, 15 saga, but Georgia has a lot of experience on this Penrith Whitewater Stadium, so she'll have plenty of time to catch that back up. Mishima of Japan getting on the way, a little hiccup at gate one, but now the tight stagger section five, six and seven spins around nicely, and in trouble there on gate seven, it's got a double back. Meanwhile, Georgia Rankin on the finishing straight of her run, and she will set the time to do, and it's looking pretty clean, Kieran, as we watch the scoreboard, click over, and she finishes. Georgia Rankin, 135.38, a clean one there from Georgia Rankin. Yeah, Georgia Rankin there, nearly 20 seconds faster than her semi-final run. Just for a bit of reference, the fastest time from the semi-finals early this morning, a 112.23. From Eddie Lee Park of the USA, no Eddie Fox and Jess Fox tightly packed behind her one second and 1.8 seconds back. So it's been tight stuff at the top of the field here this afternoon for the final. And the reference starts about 112. We expect it to be in the medals. Interesting to see how that transpires later in this final. The Kandi on course, it's Red Mishima of Japan. So eight seconds of penalties already approved throughout her run, so that will prove costly. At the top of the course is Sarah Crosby, the junior partner from Melbourne. Did really well to make it into the final this morning. A little bit of fight on her hands now, but she's got a strong cheer squad on the bank next to her to egg her up the Eddie to gate three. Hopefully she can get this run back on track. She had a really lovely run this morning in those semis, so let's hope she can capitalise on that in the finals. The only junior paddler from Australia in this final this afternoon as well, so congratulations to Sarah for making that. A really nice spin on the bridge at gate six. And she'll have to go back to gate seven, unfortunately, as we see Mishima of Japan flying across the finish line. It's not going to be enough to challenge the time of Georgia Rankin. Some 59 seconds back. Still with us is Sarah Crosby on course. Flying down now through gate 9 and 10. A little bit offline through gate 10, but she'll reset. Sarah already a very experienced paddler. It's always good to see her digging in here in the finals of the C1 Women's. Following Sarah Crosby will be Haruka Okazaki of Japan, Madri de la Sur of France, Georgia Callahan of Australia coming at you very shortly. We will stay with Sarah Crosby coming down. It's the upstream of gate 13. She'll try and get out into the fast water as quick as she can and get her run back on track to see if she can challenge the time set by Georgia Rankin and Ren Rishima of Japan. But right now at the top of the course, it is Haruka Okazaki of Japan, nicely through gate three. And out into the current, one of the more powerful paddlers of the Japanese contingent we've seen here. The highest ranked of their team in the C1 semi-finals. So awesome to see two representatives from Japan in the finals, got a very strong team to compete at the Australian Open this year and it's been awesome having them here living and training in Penrith for a short period of time. Absolutely, staying at the Crest Hotel in the apartments near the station, riding their bikes. I think they went to Kmart and bought, a, bought out the shop of bikes and uh, they ride to the course each day, including, including in the heavy rain that we had earlier in the week. So, Good um, determination and resilience from uh, the Japanese off the water as well as on the water. And they were on the podium in the juniors and under 23 categories yesterday and uh, could be again today. We do give out boomerangs to the uh, winners in those, yeah, the place getters in the under 18, under 23 and the open. So Crosby finishing 168.0. So Georgia Rankin still comfortable out in front. And uh, we will wait for Okazaki to finish and then look forward to Majuri de la Sue of France, who's now getting her run on the way on the top of the course and flying in and out of gate three. Yes, and Majuri de la Sue, not the semi-final that she would have wanted, so she'll look to reset and have a good run in the final. She's the number two ranked 
to be with the public here this weekend. And like Richard said, she was fourth place at the Tokyo Olympic Games, so certainly knows how to sling a C1 around. Flying down through this top section, of course, already pretty clean on the top section, really fast, so shaping up to be a good run for Della Sue as France. As we're now following Haruka Okazaki into the finish, it's going to be close whether this is our new fastest time or not. And Okazaki of Japan, she'll cut the beam. It looks like a 135.75, good enough for second place. Just 0.37 behind the time set by the double Georgia Rankin. And here comes Marjorie Delasu out of the upstream, the boat 13. Now the tricky double down, she goes to her left side. Looks to get held up by the wave, but I'm not sure. She managed that as well as she might like. Into the upstream at 16 and away. So Marjorie Delasu looking to push well out in front. Set a score for the others to chase. And away from the last right hand upstream. Four votes to go for Marjorie Delasu. Fourth place in the Tokyo Olympics. Trains on the Paris Olympic course. And here training in Australia. She raced last weekend. She raced to the Oceania Champs. She heads home. This her last run as she flies down towards the finish. 135 is history and the new leader is Marjorie Delasseur of France in a time of 113.71. That time Delasseur would have been quick enough for second in the semi-final so this could be a potential medal contention run. We're now looking at Georgia Callahan of Australia. Young Padler from Melbourne. A couple of issues on the first couple of gates for Georgia. But already a very experienced Padler having represented Australia a couple of times. And it is all going wrong for Georgia, unfortunately, getting a canoe the wrong way up and it fell off her head. So poor Georgia, not the final that she would have wanted, but hopefully she can get back online and enjoy the rest of her run. Quite a stylish paddler, as we can see, throwing that boat around. And we'll all cheer, cheer Georgia on down to the finish and hopefully she can finish her Oz Open final in the C1 Women's in style. Let's go, Georgia O'Callaghan. Great recovery. Got her head back together. And on with her run into grade 11, into the spin. So, obviously, a tiny error. But good recovery from Georgia O'Callaghan. And Georgia Delafu, I think, coming back to that conversation, will be very happy to finish her campaign down under with a great run. And it looks like it's in contention for the podium. But now the top of the course in the blue. Aqua Blue Boat, good number five, Kate Eckhart. Kate Eckhart starting her final run here in the C1 Women to the Oz Open. Probably she was on the earlier gates, but Kate will be taking the Rupert Paddler on the white water. She'll have no issues resetting for this one. Opting for the spin on gate six, it's a much safer move and really repeatable for someone with the skill of Kate Eckhart. And really tight through six and seven and high into the upstream of gate eight. So. A good rescue mission early on in the run for Kate Eckhart and she looks to power down through that mid part of the course and consolidate on some of the speed she's shown earlier in the semi final. Back to the spin with Gary Rowan. This is a really nice move. Staying in the play. Staying on the right hand side with a cross bar to check. And a line to set to the upstream. She does that well. And now the set up. For the double run. Georgia O'Callaghan crossing. It didn't start well and uh, didn't end so well for Georgia O'Callaghan. But what an athlete on the rise at the Australian Younger 23 category. She's had a good campaign and she can be proud of the aggression and the positivity she brings to her racing. But all eyes on Kate Eckhart as she finishes her run and at the top of the course, her hand over to you, Kieran. At the end of the C1 Women's Final now, Jessica Fox, the lady who is no introduction. Speedy on the first three gates, straight back out into the flow. She was the third fastest paddler in the semi-final earlier this morning. She was the bronze medalist in the kayak yesterday. And just one of the most experienced paddlers on Penrith Whitewell Stadium. So expect some stylish paddling from Fox here. Obviously Jess was the Olympic champion in the C1 category. As Kate Eckhart has just crossed the line, it's a 121.40. Good enough for second place at this stage. But as soon as Jess hits the lower end of the course, we'll start to determine the medal positions in this C1 ladies final. 
just opting for the spin on gate 11, usually very fast on this top section for the high level pendant. Yes, good one going at the top of the course. And no trouble with gate 13 today. Yesterday, there was a, there was a spot of bother in the section of the course, but safely through the battle down as well. 14 and 15 into the up 16, holds on and the way quickly on the exit. Good stuff, John Jess in that little part of the course, one of the finest single stick slingers in the game. We see Jess now coming down into that penultimate up straight the up right next to the number two stopper feature to wrap out about as tight as possible. We're sprinting across the pool and into the final drop. It's going to be tight stop. Jess finishing her run, meanwhile at the top of the course, it's our young assistant, Noreeny Fox, the second ranked paddler. You can see one ladies category from the semi-final early this morning. Noreeny off to a flying start here as well, jumping in nice and high to gate three. Good as well. Also suggests crossing the line. It does look like to be a pretty speedy time. She's eight seconds clear. It's going to be very tight racing here. Now Amy Fox looking excellent in that early part of the course. But it looks like she's not happy with her attack on gate 7 going back for that one so unfortunately for Noemi Fox a recirc early on her run proving a little bit costly but she's fast on this midsection of the course and will still be in contention for the medals as she's able to lay it down lay it down on the back part of the course really nice from Fox there through gate 11 straight back out into the road into gate 12 and pulling as hard as she can on that paddle Still to come, of course, every leap path of the USA, the number one ranked paddler from the semi finals. There's an absolutely stacked field here at the Australian Open in the women's C1 category. And Noemi Fox flying now in that middle part of the course, chasing a little bit of lost time from earlier in the run, but she's got the speed and she's got the experience here at Penrith Whitewater Stadium. So we'll cheer her on to the finish. Noemi Fox now, only two upstreams to go in this final run. Of course, it's every lead up of the USA, paddler number three, and the highest ranked paddler from the semi final. Really tight on the top two upstreams, and putting a lot of power down on this top straight as we watch Noemi Fox coming through the final gate. And it looks hard opting for the spin as Noemi crosses the line into third position. 119.91. Great, great effort, plays with cover after that early time loss, and credit to her for that. Resilience and uh, she cleaned the bottom of the course, finished off strongly. Jess, way out in front, 104 84. That would have been second with the name of Simon Tony here in the event. We might catch it right before uh, the old man gets carried away. But a great run leading the field. Uh, Marjorie Delassu, 8 seconds back in 113 71. And here comes our uh, Evie Lipfart. She took the spin option on boat 6 and keeping a clean shoot. Uh, so she's looking to get onto. Podium once again in the Australian campaign and get out of it 16 without sticking too much. Yeah, a couple of small pickups for every loop up in that middle section. Still very much in contention with the medals. It was such a fast top section for the young American paddler. Wrapping out of that final up stream now. Only really one move to go for every loop up in the USA. I think she's going to be just outside the time of Jess Fox. Very much in contention for second and third place for every week up of the USA. She'll need to wrap out of that final up stream as quick as she can. Flying into the current and onwards towards the finish. It's going to be very close. Is it Leaf up or is it Delisu? And every loop part it is into a second position. 111 53. And the silver medal goes to the United States of America, but no doubt about the winner for Australia, Jess Fox, 104.84, some six seconds out in front. Great runner from every Lipfart into second. And the Marjorie Delassu, she'll be happy to go away with a podium when she goes to the airport and flies back to Paris. 113.71, and a disappointment for Naomi in a fourth position, 119.91, but great courage and... Uh, great paddling too, so you know it is a mistake and this is early in the season, but a great promise for her. We can head Kate Eckhart for Australia in fifth, 121.4, Georgia Rankin in sixth, Haruka 
Okazaki of Japan in seven. Sarah Crosby, up and coming junior from Melbourne in eight. The Ren Mishima of Japan in nine. Randy out of the finals here at the Australian Open in the women's C1 category, Georgia Callahan. So a great race, a lot of excitement and tension and close calls here and there, but um, so good to watch. Yeah, but also to see such tight racing at the top end of the field in the women's C1. Just with a clean pair of wheels, but all the other competitors tightly packed together, so close racing, proving that the C1 category is alive and strong here in Australia. With fantastic racing at the Australian Open, but don't go anywhere. Just four minutes to go until the men's C1 finals kick off. Leading us down will be Takuya Haneda of Japan, the Olympic bronze medalist from the Rio de Janeiro Games. Following him, Oliver Pucker, Brody Crawford, Benjamin Ross, Declan Ellis, Kaylin Bassett, Tristan Carter, Jake Cockett, and Liam Jagu, two of our Irish paddlers. And last to go, Daniel Watkins from Australia. So, sure to be a good fight here for the Australian Open title in the C1. And wait very shortly. C1 final, Takuya Haneda of Japan leading us off. Bronze medalist at the Rio Olympic Games, a very experienced paddler in the C1 category. Definitely one of the favourites to take some of the podium positions here this afternoon at Penrith Whitewater Stadium. A couple of issues in his semi-final run led to him to be a slightly lower range than he would otherwise be. And a spin on gate 7 for Takuya, so not exactly what he would have planned for. You could see he was really setting up for that direct move showing his versatility dropping into the spin without losing too much time. So it's Takuya Haneda on course representing Japan and really fast and crucially but clean on this top section as well. So we'll follow Takuya down and looking really smooth in this middle part of the course. 
We need to have plenty of power. Some of the fastest seated fellas, the likes of William Jagu, Jake Cochran, Daniel Watkins, Calvin Bassett, Tristan Carter, all with plenty of speed on this Penrith White World Stadium. So to feel we really need to hit the afterburners across this final stretch. Coming into that final penultimate upstream side and across the pool. He's set himself up nicely for the last drop. Now it's Oliver Cook now at the top of the course. Really nice attacking start for the Kiwi Paddler. 13th ranked C1 Paddler in this field here. And he's ninth in the semi-final, so booked himself a spot in today's final race. And to Kiwi Honeida has stopped the clock. It's a 107.82. So I don't suspect that that will be in medal contention. The top three positions in the men's semi-final are 102 and then a 104 and a 105. So expect those to be fairly representative of what you're required to do to earn a medal here this afternoon in the C1 men's final. Of course, just Fox with that blistering 104 just before would have been the second fastest of times in the C1 men's category. So Jess really showing that she can mix it with not only the best women in the world, but also the best men. Something truly special we'll just wait and see. But Oliver Pickner now on course. Looking very smooth in this middle part of the course. The key will have the wheel lift to light the afterburners as it reaches the jack stopper feature. And the course really opens up in this back half of the course, allowing the athletes to put down a lot of power. So Pickner now jumping across that stopper into the upstream on the right hand side of the course gate. 19 who looks to wrap out of that as tight as he can. And the final four gates on the last drop feature. An important one for Oliver here. Meanwhile, at the top of the course, it is Brody Crawford, fan favourite paddler here at Penrith Whitewater Stadium. Brody, of course, formerly of Western Australia. Now he moves up here to Penrith, focusing on his kind of style. And as ever, Oliver Pittman has crossed the line. It's a 1.13. It's just behind the time of Taku Haneda, who's currently sitting in the top spot with a 107. It's Bodie Crawford on course. And the rules and chains in the a couple of issues on the poles early on under the bridge. But Bodie with plenty of speed on that boat of his flying down into the middle part of the course. Into the spin on his right side. Turning the speed across the flats into the upstream and going 14. So Crawford last week won the Penrith Open. He was really composed and started last in the final. He's an early starter in this final and needs to keep his composure through the middle and keep the clean score. He's got a penalty early on. That is about six. And he put that into his head. He jumps down through Jack's drop into the upstream. Brady Crawford will down the challenge to the rest of the Australians, Ben Josh, Dr. Norris, Aaron Basson, Tristan Carter, still to come, and of course Daniel Watkins, the fastest man from the scene, who will be the last to start here in the final. But here comes Brady Crawford, now paddling on the left, through to the finish line, 107 the time to do, then he crosses outside, 106.52 in fact, he goes in front, so 106.52, Brady Crawford, the new race leader, with a two-second penalty in that total score. Meanwhile, the top of the course is Benjamin Ross, Cutler from Melbourne in Victoria. 19th ranked C1 Cutler for the Ben Ross was the seventh ranked Cutler, sorry, from the semi-final. So, really performing well this weekend here at Penrith White Water Stadium. We saw Ben taking a few conservative lines under the bridge, but crucially keeping it clean and giving himself the opportunity to really light the afterburners in the back half of this course. There's a paddler with very few expectations on his shoulders. One of the younger members of the field here this afternoon at Penrith White Water Stadium. So, hopefully Ben can just absolutely fly down this back half of the course and sink himself into a really good spot here in this C1 men's final. A couple of issues on the poles of the upstream at gate 16, so hopefully we can keep it clean for the rest of the course. A big cheer squad on the side of the river for Benjamin Ross, one of the more popular paddlers here this weekend. As we can see, everyone really getting behind Ben as he comes into the final drop. It looks like a really good run from the young Victorian, dropping into that first step. 
stop out and into that final up stream he'll wrap out as tight as he can and onwards towards the beach. It's going to be a quick time for the young paddler from Melbourne, Ben Ross, flying down the course. What's it going to be? And it's enough for third place. Ben Ross slotting in with a 109. Energy's pulling a little bit costly there for Ben Ross, but it's now Declan Ellis, paddler number 18 from Penrith, dropping in at the start of his run. Looking really smooth and really control on the water from Declan Ellis. Quite a stylish paddler, maybe not as powerful as some of the stronger fellas, the likes of Tristan Carter and Karen Bassett, a lot of top speed, but Declan Ellis really using his length to his advantage and paddling really stylishly down this course, dropping in to the downstream gate 11 and straight back out into the main flow, so it's good stuff from the young paddler from Henry, Declan Ellis on course. So good top section for Declan Ellis and there's a race within the race amongst this group. There's the under 23 boys, there's the open boys, and there's the Australian team on the line. Here comes Declan powering in on the left side into boat 16, the left hand upstream. And away he goes, he'll be followed by Karen Bassett. So we're halfway through this field of 10. Looking to challenge. Bailey Crawford, 106.52 the lead. Ben Ross was fast, 105.32 is real time. And he had penalties. Declan, on the other hand, is clear so far. Declan Ellis comes out of the last upstream gate. Support on the inside of the course for him. He's chasing hard, 104, 105.06.52 for the lead. And Declan Ellis goes into third position, 108.33. Ahead of Ben Ross, what a great run from Ellis. He slapped the water with his paddle from the first run. And I think he was fist pumping on his second run today. But a clean run back to back for Ellis, what a great race. Yeah, a very good day for young Declan Ellis. Looking out the top of the course, one of the hottest prospects in C1 Paddling Australia, Caitlin Bassett, a few issues for the former boat going up to the beach there, having to reset for gate 7, so not what Caitlin would have wanted. Caitlin Bassett, obviously in tight competition with his younger brother, Lovey, who ran into strike in his semi-final run, and was unable to put a seat here in the final. But Caitlin's still on course, and will look to finish this off strong, because regardless of the podium positions, every second counts for these guys here, as it is a selection event for the Australian team. So Caleb Bassett flying now on the midsection of the course, working as hard as he can to make up for some of that lost time. He's a really powerful player that gets that boat up to speed super fast. So Caleb now almost into that penultimate upstream. Very tight on gate 19 there and straight back out into the main flow. So lining up for that final drop. Meanwhile, we'll look at the top of the course as Tristan Carter, fifth ranked paddler here in the C1 men's KB. Into gate three and looking super smooth already in his final run. Tristan, a really, really powerful paddler, getting that boat straight back up to speed. As we see, Caelan Bassett is going to cross the line. He'll be out of contention for the medals, unfortunately. It's fifth spot for Caelan. Meanwhile, Tristan zooming through under the bridge, keeping the boat nice and clean under the poles. It's a conservative line for Carter, but we really needed a safe and repeatable run for the paddler from Melbourne, who's now moved up to Penrith to race Canoe Slalom, and it seems to be paying dividends for him this afternoon. And to all those laps on this Penrith Whitewater course, from when he was a young teenager to now as a senior, most of the 20, 22 World Championships in Germany, and he was high and fast in the 13. He was cautious through 5, 6, 7. Did the spin, and now he's turning it on. 14, 15 on the crossbar. He's a righty, but he does paddle on both sides. Then he switches to the left. Another great 16. So Tristan Carter building the run. He's looking to move ahead with 106.52. That's the time set by Brody Crawford, the current leader, ahead of Takuya Haneda from Japan, the Rio bronze medalist. Four days to go for Tristan Carter. Down the drop. He's up to so he's super high, can get out of trouble around those poles, clean from the judge, two gates to go for Carter, long nose, six, the time to be, he's inside, and Tristan Carter, the new leader, 103.97. That's the air, a little break the steady start, straight through the middle, powerful finish from Tristan Carter. Excellent run from Carter there. 
really nice to see because we've been able to run right when he needed it. Delivering in the final of the Australian Open. Meanwhile, it's Jake Cochran of Ireland starting off his run. A couple of issues on date seven. Reminiscent of what happened to Caelan Bassett just moments before. Jake having to reserve on that date, unfortunately. But he looked to finish off his run in style. It's been a good summer of competition in Australia for these Irish boys coming over to train and race. So we follow Jake Cochran now. Day 13, it's a really nice upstream from the Irishman. Hopefully he can build a little bit more speed into this run and get himself a little bit higher up the order. But yeah, it's all going well for Cochran up the bridge. Still to come, Liam Jagu of Ireland and Danny Watkins of Australia. We're yet to see any paddler go under that time of 102 set by Danny Watkins in the heats. And only one paddler so far has gone faster than the Fantastic 104 that Jess Fox set just moments ago. So Tristan Carter, the only one so far. The quick scoreboard check, Carter with a 103.97, Brody with a 106.52, and Tapia Hernando running up third place with a 107.82. Meanwhile, it's on the course, it is Liam Jagu, the Irishman, steaming down the top part of this course. His compatriot, Jake Cochran, just passing through the final gate, and on its towards the finish, Jagu. Swinging that boat around and another paddler coming unstuck on the gate 6-7 combination. So identical performance from the lead to be Jay Cochran on that stagger. We've seen Tristan Carter, uh, Eddie Woodcock before taking that option. So um, this is um, challenging men to do a violent and then we can do a lot of things. second time barrier, so the middle position is currently a 103 and 106. As we see, William Jagu looks like the fire has gone out for the Irishman. A little bit of speed has knocked off the boat as it cruises down towards the final drop. Daniel Watkins starting off his run for powerful Tasmania, of course. Finalist at the Tokyo Olympic Games and the number two ranked paddler in the canoe class here. Fantastic run in his semi-final to book himself a top spot as we see Liam Jagu of Ireland crossing the line. It is a 110.9, so not quite enough to be a contender this afternoon in the Sea Men's Finals. But it's Daniel Watkins on course, the final boat in the canoe slalom this weekend. It is, of course, the C1 Men's Final, and Daniel Watkins clean and fast on the top section. Drops now into gate 11, taking that one on direct. Most of the other boats we've seen today have spun that one. So Dan really showing his style and taking that one on direct. He's looking very quick through this mid part of the course. It's going to be a time to beat 103.97 from Tristan Carter, the current standard. That's right, and two Australians in the, on the podium, and they will really remain on the podium. It's between Takuya Hanada and Dan Watkins. Interesting, this yes, that move 11 12. He took it forwards and it's like I want to do this on my left. It doesn't need to because he's good on his right too. But uh, a good show from Daniel Watkins and this run is clean so far. What a great semi-final. 102 he did in the semi. Can he match it here in the final? Uh, does he have the arms? No, does he have the wheel? He is in the final upstream. He's chasing down the 103.97 of Tristan Carter and grabbing rights on the line here for Dan Watkins, 100, 101, 102, not quite in front of Carter, he goes second by 0.2 of a second, Tristan Carter, 103.97, the Australian Open champion, and in second place from Australia, it's a 1, 2, 3, Dan Watkins, 104.19, and in third, Brody Crawford, the early leader, 106.57. 